Welcome back to Grains and Glass, the video series that takes you from the creation of a brew all the way to drinking it. In this episode, we are actually going to get to brewing our hazy IPA. Like I said before, we're using Granny Smith apples in this, so stay tuned. And at the very end, there is a 10% coupon code that you're going to want to know about. Welcome back to this episode of Grains to Glass. Today we're actually going to brew it. Uh, we're going to be brewing the Grains to Glass Hazy IPA and our grain father. If you didn't see us create the recipe, click now, go back, look at the other episode, you'll see where you can get the recipe and also you can see how I created it in Beer Smith. Um, two, two of the units that we're going to be using today is, all, as you know, the grain father and we're also going to be using their sparge unit. Um, the sparge unit's really nice because you can preheat your water, get it going well before the uh, brew day starts. We'll talk a little bit more about that later in the video. Let's get going. Cheers. One of the best features about the Grandfather Connect is its Bluetooth connectivity. In the next couple steps, we're going to actually show you how to get it from Beersmith into your pad or your phone so you can run your whole brew day as easy as possible. Okay, so how do we get the grandfather recipe into the app on our handy dandy phone so the easiest way that i found this um you can do it through dropbox that's not a problem you can do it through um a number of different apps uh i usually just email it to myself believe it or not so what i do is i click here i choose it so and then i am going to go up to the top where it says file, and then you're gonna export select it. And you're gonna change that BSMX file down to XML file, okay? Name it. Then where are we gonna put it? I'm gonna throw it into, I'm gonna throw it into the grains of glass, the folder that I have for this video series. And we press save. And then if we go to our grains and glass little thing here, we can find that XML file. Now, what I do is I usually just double click and then um, click share, mail, and then send it to myself at schoolhousebeer.com and I send it, send anyways, no big deal, right? So then when I come down to my mail, we should be getting it any second now. Hopefully it went through. Okay, to open up the recipe into my grandfather connect, what I do is I go to my mail, I go to all my mail, I select the, I click it, and what it's going to do is open it up. Now, I don't know about Android, I don't know anything about them, I'm a Mac guy, so just trust me on this. Then I hit the share button, but you see that nothing, you don't see anything here, so if I pull over, you'll see the copy to Grandfather Connect, I click it, the Grandfather Connect is going to open up. It's processing. Continue. Click here. Click on recipes. And then you'll see the grain to, grains to glass IPA is there. And that's it. Okay, one of the things uh, that makes this beer a little bit different than most IPAs most of the time you're about 80, 20 on your grains, no matter what they are. On this one, it's all over the place. What we're using is 40% Maris Otter, 40% white wheat, 20% flaked wheat, and at 30 minutes, we're gonna add about a pound or so of Granny Smith apples at 30 minutes. And the reason why is we're not trying to get the sugars out of it. What we're trying to do is get the pectins. The pectins are going to make sure that it doesn't flocculate very well and we get that super haze that everybody's looking for. So Alan's going to help me mash in right now. We've already put in our lower bucket 
And remember, last time we put in the upper and lower overflow valves and the perforated bottom. So, but what we do want to add right now is the grain stopper. This goes into your upper uh, overflow valve so the grains don't get into your pump. All right. You about ready there, Slick? Okay, here we go. And we are mashing. Oop. Now Alan has assured me that there's enough water in here. I got a little bit worried. Trust me, guys, when you're doing this, I was sitting there going, okay, it's a little thick. It is going to be thick. We're getting a lot of glutens in here. We're getting a lot of those, uh, the thickness of the oats and the wheat. So um, what I'm going to do next is add the perforated top over top the grains. Now, how we want to do the, oops, yeah, yeah, there we go. We add it slowly until it's basically you're over top of the grains themselves. Now, we take the overflow valve over, off, we put the funnel on top, we put our lid on, we insert the silicon tubing, and then connect this to the pump. So what's this going to do now, thank you sir, make sure you turn this on, I've done that, just saying. The, the wart's going to run through the pump, up through here, over the grains again, and if there's any overflow it's going to go back into the pump. It's a nice little feature because you don't want all that grain to be sitting over top, but, and that's where this is a really great product because you don't get stuck mashes. So all we have to do now on our handy dandy app is press start mash and it's there to go. Our next step in about uh, 45 minutes is to get the water up, to, our sparge water up to temp and add our apples at about 30 minutes. So there's a couple things that we're going to add during the mash. Um, Alan's going to chop these apples. He took the stems out, but we're going to leave the, uh, the seeds and everything else we don't really care about. Just chop them up. It doesn't have to be like a fine dice or anything. Big chunks are fine. All we're looking for is the pectins. Now, you probably started to think about why haven't we added any hops during this process? Well, we're doing a first ward hop a whirlpool hop, a dry hop at high croissen, and then a dry hop five days before package. Now, the reason why I really like dry hop, I mean, uh, first ward hopping, first ward hopping is you get the alpha acids, you get that bitterness level, but you don't get that hop burn that is you think about in traditional, you know, West Coast style IPAs from the 90s. Um, when you do a traditional 60, 30, 15, or 60, 15, 5 hop edition, that, that's very useful in a lot of different styles. But um, on this, what we're going for is that real super juicy, super hazy IPA. And that's why we're going first wort. And we're going to throw some in in the whirlpool at the same time because the isomerization of the hop doesn't break down that much. But in the high croissen, it does, keeping that real haze effect that we're looking for. We're also using a uh, Omega's Tropical IPA. We really do love this yeast. Um, we're going to talk about it later, especially when we talk, we show you the video on um, fermentation in the catalyst. So we're about to get ready to sparge, and we'll be right back. Okay, we just added the apples at 30 minutes into the mash. We're going to let them go. Like we said, we're looking for those pectins. I also like to take a gravity reading during the, uh, the mashing process, just to make sure that we're coming close to our numbers. A lot of people don't do this. It's not a necessity. Um, one of the things we like to use is a refractometer on this because we can take just a tad bit out, just a, enough to put onto the, the, 
the screen there, cool it down quickly and go from there. We're gonna take a, a, a gravity reading real quick and uh, make sure that we're hitting our numbers. If you don't have a refractometer, all you have to do is take out enough, chill it into some ice water or put it in your refrigerator, get it down to room temperature and use your uh, hydrometer. All right, we're done with the mash now and what we're gonna do next is we're going to sparge and throw in our first ward hops. Um, so what we have to do is take the recirculation arm off, make sure you turn the pump off again Take the recirculation arm out. Thank you. Take the lid off. Once we've taken the lid off, we're going to use this. The most precarious part of this whole setup. So what you have to do is you put this arm into these, there's two holes in the, the mash basket the grain basket. And I'm going to do is I'm going to lift it up and then turn. There's a lip in there that you want to make sure that you're set on. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to grab a bucket. And this bucket we're going to use give the sparge unit a little height. Ready? One, two, three. Now, in most situations, you can actually just batch sparge at this point, which would mean um, just taking a pot of, of water that you have at the house and pour it over. With the sparge unit, it's nice because I get it at the right temperature. And I made a silicon hose attachment. I took about six feet of hose. I don't even really need that much hose, but you know, you can never have too many hose. Um, and we're gonna put that on to the sparge unit. I notched some holes into it, just like a traditional sparging unit. And then I'm going to turn this on. Oh, there's a hole in it. Okay. That's just like every other brew day, you got to improvise sometimes. And what's happening, you can't see it, but inside of these holes, the water is actually just flowing over. We're going to sparge on this, like I said, for, I like to sparge for about 30 minutes. This will take about us 30 minutes to get all of the two and a half gallons worth of water. Through the mash. I slowed it down a little bit. I'm gonna take my pipette one more time. Alan here just gave me a great suggestion. What I've always done is taken the wort out of here, put it in some cold water, and let it go around. But Alan was saying, if I take this hot wort and put it on the plate, close it up, and let it sit for a couple minutes, it, that liquid is so thin that it's going to, uh, it's going to chill pretty quickly. All right, right after this, we're going to start the boil and we're going to add the first wort hops. So we've finished the mash and now we're heading, we've finished, finished the sparge. Now we're going to take the, uh, the grain basket out. We've already added the hops to the mat, um, to the wort because we're adding it first wort, meaning we're adding it before the boil. This, um, I've done a lot of research on it. If you know more about this, I couldn't find any real science behind it, but what we do know is we get less bitter, but we still get the hops in there. The other tool that we're gonna use today, and I just took it out of the uh, first wort so we can put it back in in just a second, 
is our hop spider. Yes, it is a little dirty. It's been in the in the. It's a little hoppy. It's a little hoppy. Um, so Alan's going to take this off. He's going to use this handle one more time. And I like using a bucket just to drop it in. And what we're doing now is we're going to bring this up to a boil. And once we have it to a boil, uh, we're going to boil it for 60 minutes. At the end, I'm going to show you how to whirlpool with the, the grandfather. All right, so now we're at the whirlpool stage. And to whirlpool in a uh, grandfather is a little bit different. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach the recirculation hose one more time. We're going to open the pump, and then we're going to press pump on the front right here. And it's going to start moving the wart. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to add an ounce of Mosaic, an ounce of Citra, and an ounce of Galaxy. We're going to do this till it gets down to about 180 degrees. You don't want to go below 180 on any kind of wart. That's your danger zone. Um, you're going to get some off flavors at that point. But what we're going to do is we're going to run this for, like I said, probably about 25 minutes till it gets down till about uh, 180, and then we're going to chill. Once, and that's to make sure that we get the hot flavors that we want inside the boil. So the grandfather does come with a, a wart chiller. It's a, a uh, counterflow chiller. It's really nice. To hook it up um, and sanitize it, this is the easiest way to do it. What we do is we hook this, the hose back up to the pump. Make sure that you screw it in tight. It does have a ball like valve in there. And if it's not completely secure, you're not good. Now, once you open this, you'll put your, it, the wart comes through here, through here, and then back out. And that will go into your fermenter very soon. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna run some hot wart through it just by pressing the pump. And there we go. So we've done our whirlpool stand on our hop stand. Um, now what we're going to do is actually chill this wort. Um, we've got the cold water, the blue, going to the sink. We've got the hot water, the red, going into the, the drain. Connected to the pump, going into our outlet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn, well Alan's going to turn the pump on for about two or three seconds and then we're going to cut it off. And the reason why we're going to do that is we're going to get the initial wart chilled quickly. Now you might be asking what this is. This is an aquarium pump hooked up to a five micron stone. This stone is going to aerate our beer. When we aerate the reason why we aerate is because the yeast cells themselves are anaerobic. That means that they don't need oxygen. But to break down the outer cell wall, actually cell membrane, cell walls are on plants, cell membrane of the yeast, it needs oxygen to, to multiply. Now remember, in our, lat, in our second video, which you can watch, is how to make the yeast starter. And I'm going to be adding this yeast starter really soon. Mind pressing that pump? Um, one of the things I do for all yeast starters, do you, if you see all this wort that's sitting here over top, the yeast cake, I decant. And what all decanting means is to pour off the top, And all I'm doing is getting rid of that wart that I don't need in my beer. I leave a little in there and I make a slurry. Now remember, your stir bar is still in here. Don't throw that away. Trust me. Do you have a magnet for the bottom of the holder? I do not.
You have a magnet? Yes. Great tip. Just learned it myself. Put a magnet at the bottom and it will hold your stir bar. Yes. We're going to do that in just one second, believe it or not. So now we're going to... It's off. All right. So we're going to run this over to our catalyst fermenter. And here we go. Do you mind plugging in the aerating stone? Only if I have to. Is it going? There we go. Come on now. All right. So as you see, as it's filling up, we're adding oxygen. And I know that's counterintuitive of everything that you've ever been taught before about brewing and keeping oxygen off your beer. But I trust me, when it comes to yeast populations, oxygen in the wort is your best friend. So now we've chilled our wort, we're gonna cut the pump off. Okay. All right, and now you can see that we've aerated the the wart. All this has been going on for about 15 minutes. We take the lid out. We're going to take the aerator out. We're going to use Alan's brilliant idea of using a magnet to hold the yeast and what I'm going to do while I'm doing this is I'm going to pour the yeast into the sanitized jar that goes to the bottom of the catalyst. <laughs> Look at that. It actually worked. It, <laughs> I was kind of skeptical. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So now we're going to add this to the bottom of the catalyst. And the reason why we're going to do this is wait till you see what happens next. I open the valve and all that yeast is now being introduced into our water. We're going to put a airlock and we're going to put a bung on this and then close it up. As I'm closing it up, Alan is doing me a huge favor by sanitizing. And and we put it in, and there we go. Now. As I've told you before, if you come online and use the coupon code Grains of Glass Grandfather or Grains of Glass Catalyst, you'll get 10% off your purchase online or in the store. Just come and see us. Guys, this is how you brew this amazing um, hazy IPA. You're gonna, this is part one. Part two is gonna be dry hopping and I'm gonna show you that over the next two weeks. As we always say, cheers. cheers. As always guys, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tinder, Grinder, wherever you can find us. And we have a coupon code for the Grandfather online at www.schoolhousebeer.com and that coupon code is grains to glass grandfather all lowercase all one word thank you as always see you next week